International Conference on Science, Engineering and Technological Innovations organized by Research Cultural Society and Department of Automations, Computer Science and Technology Department, Kui National University, Ukraine. I just want to inform you about this organization. Kui National University is one of the largest education institute of the central region of Ukraine for qualified personnel training in metallurgical, mining, engineering, and technological specialization. Scientific subjects performed by the university aimed to increase the efficiency of production and control the process, power saving, and environmental production. Automations, Computer Science, and Technology Department, ACST department trains specialized in computer science, automations, and computer integrated technologies. The main education and scientific areas are information support for decision making, development and implementation of process automations and mechatronic systems. Now the next our organization, Research Cultural Society, is a government registered scientific research organization. So, uh, society is working for the research community at national and international level to impart quality and non-profitable services. Objective of our international conference to promote scientific and educational activities towards the advancement of common citizens' life by improving the theory and practice of various disciplines of science and engineering. The main of the the main aim of the conference is to provide interaction stage for researchers and practitioners from academy and industries to deal with the state of the art advancement in the in their respective fields. In this organization, we have a five speakers. First of all, we would like to present a short video about the Research Cultural Society. Kindly start the video, sir. Warm greetings to all. Research Culture Society is a government-registered scientific research organization. Society is working for the research community at national and international level to impart quality and non-profitable services. Our members are scholarly educationists from various universities and institutes of repute. Here the faculties, research scholars and students interested in the area of research are given guidance and support in how their work can contribute to the betterment of our present and future generations. Research Culture Society is conducting conferences, seminars, yes. symposiums, workshops, training, and development programs on different themes. Society has organized 100 plus educational programs successfully at national and international level in association with different educational institutions. Also published selected research papers as journal special issues and book proceedings. Society is running international level referred, peer reviewed journals with ISSN and books publication with ISPN. Educational institutions, colleges, universities are being welcomed for memorandum of understanding and collaboration to organize events. Society is promoting and sponsoring educational events as well as publishing research work in collaboration. The society also offers membership. The journals associated with Research Culture Society are referred, indexed, and with high impact factor. Society journals are publishing research papers articles in all major fields and subjects related to sciences, health sciences, engineering, agriculture, pharmacy, commerce, management, social sciences, arts, humanities, education, law and life skills. Journals provide publications and digital identification with a nominal processing charge. Research Culture Society also provides print and online book publications with ISPN. Society invites book publication in all study subjects and categories. Thesis converted into book and conference proceedings publication also available. 
Research Culture Society arranges special lectures on soft skills, communication skills, personality development, behavior improvement, human resource development, career development, general knowledge improvement, environmental issues, and improvement, etc. in different institutions, colleges, universities, and schools. The Society bestows excellence and achievement awards in different categories as US Awards, SRA Awards. Thank you. For further details, Dr. Natilia Murukan, Professor Gagik, Professor Om Kumar Harsh, Dr. Florian Demobs, and Dr. Pukukarmi Kiran Sri. So these all are the our guest speaker. Now first, uh, we in, uh, introduce the Dr. Uh, sorry, Professor Gagik. Uh, kindly, Bushra ma'am, kindly introduce the. Shmavonyan. Shmavonyan. Okay. 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 A very warm welcome to all of you present here. I introduce a uh, Professor Gagik Shma Yon Von Yon, if I'm correct. Yes, is professor yes. at National Polytechnic University of Armenia, advisor at Ministry of High Tech Industry of Armenia, an international expert in nanotechnology in few investments mm -hmm. and ad uh, advisory companies. He has got his PhD in physics in 1996. He has a postdoc at National Taiwan University. He was a visiting professor at the University of Hull, UK, Polytechnic of Milan, Italy, University of Bremen, Germany, Free University Berlin, Germany, Trinity College to Dublin, Ireland, University of Santiago de Com. Uh, Compostela, Spain, Institute of Nanoscience and uh, Nanotechnology, National Center for Scientific Research, Democritus, Athens, Greece, University of Sergi, Pontoise, France, and University of Tobingen, Tobingen, Germany. Uh, Professor Shma Won Yon has taught in three universities within three countries, UK, France, and uh, Armenia. He has authored, co-authored more than 50 referee journal papers, 130 conference papers, 20 patents, three books, one problem book, one monograph, and a chapter in three volume textbook, optical nano uh, spectroscopy, for European students. He is involved in coordination and advisory of different national and international R&D projects. Uh, his most significant research awards are ClinTech Oscar Award on uh, UNIDO ClinTech Open Global Ideas Competition 2015 USA and uh, ARPA Institute Invention Competition Awards in 2013 and 2014 USA. His current research in interests are 2D or auto atomic materials and flexible 2D electronics. Floor is also yours, sir. Uh, okay, thank you for the introduction. Can I start? Yes, yes, please. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, thanks to organizers for organizing this conference. I am honored to be a speaker to this event. Uh, the presentation is, uh, my presentation is devoted to the subtract rubbing technology for, for mass production of two-dimensional materials. Uh, so I am going to speak about two-dimensional materials, th uh, then about the main technologies of preparation of two-dimensional materials, and then uh, our recently suggested subset rubbing technology for mass production of two-dimensional materials. So I am going to speak about the sense rubbing mechanism, rubbing conditions, and I, I'll uh, give some examples, and then I'll stop on the advantages of the technology. Oh, so at the beginning about new materials. So the, uh, the development of new materials, especially nanom nanomaterials with 
with outstanding properties such as transparency, flexibility, etc., which sati satisfy the funda fundamental requirements of mankind is important. So nowadays, as you know, uh, silicon is the main material, but uh, what comes up, as, as, as we know, it has some restrictions. What comes after silicon? Over a millennia, civilization came to the, to the atomic materials with its outstanding uh, properties by progressing through stone, bronze, and iron ages. As to the materials combine several useful properties, they are promising for manufacturing new generation flexible electronic devices and circuits, as well as, well as household appliances. So now I'm going to speak about the first two-dimensional atomic material, graphene. Graphene is a single atomic layer of graphite, which is the thinnest material. It has 0 0.345 nanometer, mechanically the strongest and at the same time flexible, the highest electrical and thermal conductivity. Besides, it has big surface area. One gram of graphene can cover the whole football stadium. For your imagination, one millimeter tip of pencil is equal to three million graphene sheets and a piece of paper, one million graphene sheets. So here, are, here, uh, here you can see some applications of graphene and two-dimensional materials. It can be applied in mobile phone, touch screen, uh, chips, uh, uh, bendable e-paper, etc. So there are different methods for preparation of uh, two-dimensional materials. So we can divide in, in them, to, uh, we can divide two approaches, a top-down approach, which includes mechanical exfoliation, and the second one, CVD growth, uh, which is bottom-up approach. So the micromechanical exfoliation method is the first method. And uh, in 2020, uh, Gaim and Novoselov get Nobel Prize in physics. So what, the, uh, what, what is the process? So they, they, uh, the process is the following. They cleaving piece of graphite with scotch, scotch tape and then transferring the obtained graphene and graphite flakes on the substrate. So uh, the exfoliated graphene flakes are small in size and after growth, they have to be transferred. This method is, has low yield and not suitable for mass production. So here you can see a few optical images of uh, graphene and graphite flakes, and you can see that there are not so big uh, flakes, uh, and that's why it's not a uh, mass production method. And CVD growth, which is mass production method, but here we use high temperature process, and it's difficult to control the morphology. So, uh, and mm -hmm. so that's why it's the simplest, cheapest, and fastest method uh, to get two-dimensional materials. Now we can consider mechanical signing, shear exfoliation, wet ball milling, roll-to-roll, -roll, and also rubbing method of graphite-based raw materials. So I'm going to concentrate on rubbing, uh, and we suggested a new method uh, to develop to the, uh, graphene and two-dimensional materials. The main issues of preparation of two-dimensional materials are the following. The processes are long-lasting, sophisticated, and non-direct, and use toxic chemicals, high temperatures, and expensive equipment. What can be the solution? So the development of ch cheap, easy, short-lasting, ecologically clean, highly productive, and universal technology for mass production, cheap and high two-dimensional materials with big lateral size. So how to make graphene and two-dimensional materials, which can be suitable for mass production. <clears throat> so we suggest instead of, uh, inst uh, instead of using scotch tape and uh, a piece of graphite, as in the process of micro-mechanical uh, mechanical process, which is used, uh, which is used, uh, 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 Gaim and uh, Novoselov. We we are uh, we we can use we use only two substrates and also graphite without using gadgets, high temperature chemicals, sonication, etc. And we are not using any. Here you can see in the picture we are we we can we can get it uh, by hand also. <clears throat> 
And so the method compromises, substrate rubbing method compromises putting pristine bulk layered material, for example, graphite powder or other powders, layered powders, or nanotubes or fullerene uh, between two solid substrates and rubbing the substrate against each other. And as a result, multi-layer, few-layer, and then monolayer nanostripes cover the sub, uh, surfaces of two substrates we did. And uh, after few rubbings, here you can see optical images. After few rubbings, bulk dots and nanostripes appear on the silicon substrate. After further rubbings, bulk dots and are illuminated through shearing and converted into multi-layer nanostripes. After uh, further rubbings, the next ne network of nanostripes and then a sheet of nanostripe is formed on the substrate surface. So the structure is the following, that at the beginning we have 3D layered powder, and then after rubbing, we, uh, we get uh, multi-layer unique nanostripes, then mono and few layer nanostripes. And at and, and the end, we get to the national atomic sheets consisting of nanostripes. This nanostripe consists of arrays of mono and few layer nanostripes, and which consists also from arrays of mono and few layer quantum dots. At the end, we can get also two dimensional heterostructures consisting of sheets. This, these nanostripes are mono, few, and multi, multiple atomic layers of exfoliated flakes organized in several sampled narrow bands of nanosized quantum dots. And uh, here, uh, uh, here you can see that these nanostripes have different form and size. Uh, so you, uh, size, shape, and structure. And also we can also alter the distribution density of these nanostripes. So I, I'm going to show a few examples. And so you can see that they have um, a linear or a curved, uh, curved shape. Uh, this, uh, so they have different form and sizes. And uh, also about the sizes of these nanostripes. So the upper limit of nanostripe length is millimeter size or more. The length depends on the, both the su substrate size and the rubbing time. N the nanostripe we change from a few tens of nanometers to millimeters. And also uh, the sizes and shape of the rub sheets depends also on the size and shape of the substrate. And uh, here you can see the ACM images of uh, mono multilayer graphene nanostripes. And also you can see also this, uh, this two graphene or two dimensional nanostripes. And uh, so you can see also the parameters and you can see that the density and also the form and size is changing changing. So we also measured the Rama spectra of this spectra and you can see that the number of rubbings increases with the increase of the number of the spectra and you can see the transition from multi-layer to monolayer from one spectra to five spectra. And on the, on the fifth spectra you can see that we observe new peak which is which is uh, which is uh, conditioned uh, by rubbing and so we are interested in the calculation and uh, maybe you know, to understand the origin of this peak. Here are shown the FM images of these nanostripes and, and you, can, you can see that the nanostripes have uh, the height of this nanostripe is from 0 0.35 to 0, 1.7 which means that one to four layer. And uh, here you can see also IV characteristics of mono and multilayer, and you can see that big difference between mono and multilayer graphene. And uh, here you can see ACM image of, of these uh, graphene layers, and you can see that in the bottom image, you can see that we have hexagonal structure, which means that we have graphene on the, on the layer, on the substrate. So then at the end, I want to show the rubbing conditions. Uh, rubbing conditions, so we use different substrates, different powders, and uh, also uh, rubbing is carried out in different directions, different number, pressure applied to the substrate rates. Rubbing are carried, carried out at atmospheric 
pressure conditions manually, continuously, or subsequently, horizontally, or vertically. And also, you can see that we can use uh, different materials. Uh, so, as a substrate, so we use silicon. We use uh, we we use rubbing silicon with graphene wafers, uh, silicon with mica wafers, and you can see the whole range of the uh, different. We use different substrates, and you can see different hardnesses. So we use uh, from paper to silicon carbide. The uh, you can see the uh, the hardness is from one to nine in most scale. So at the, at, at the end, I want to show that we have, we use also different powders. And also you can see that the distribution density is changing and uh, different, we use different applied pressure. So the pressure, it can be very low from 100 uh, Pascal to 3000 Pascal. And also here we show besides graphite powder, we also used uh, hexagon boron nitride powder, and also in this case we got two-dimensional uh, nanostripes. The same, the behavior is the same as for graphene. And also you can see here Raman spectra of, uh, of uh, nanostripes or gra uh, hexagonal boron nitride, and you can see the same transition from multi-layer to monolayer. So at the end, he, here you can see that two-dimensional heterostructure consists of two-dimensional nanostripes, and you can see here uh, nanostripes uh, of graphene and uh, hexagonal boron nitride. And so we got a Spanish patent uh, for, for this uh, method, and also TO, uh, WIPO, and also US patent, uh, US patent. And so at the end, at the, in the conclusion, I want to say that software grabbing technology is an, ext uh, an extremely simple, it's only single step, fast, one minute, cost effective, chemically free, transfer free, reliable, highly productive and industrially scalable method uh, to get two dimensional uh, material, unique nanostripe consisting of quantum dots, sheets consisting of nanostripes, hybrid structure and devices such as transistor, et cetera. So we are open for collaboration. We are especially interested in theoretical calculations and simulations. And at the end, I want to thank uh, Professor Arturo Lopez Quintela and Professor Carlos Vasquez Vasquez from University of Santiago de Compostela, uh, who are co-authors of, uh, who are co of this work. So at, at, at the end, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for an enlightening and stimulating speech. And now our next uh, guest speaker is uh, Dr. Dr. Om uh, Kumar Harsh, uh, who is an ex-vice chancellor in local university. Uh, Bushra, ma'am, kindly introduce the sir. Yes, pretty ma'am, you can begin. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. So, Dr. Harsh uh, has a multidisciplinary academic career in the field of physics, engineering, and computer science. Dr. Harsh has obtained four research degree, including two degree from Australia and two from India. In this career, as an academician with experience in five countries, he has been facilitated with a member of Rio International Scientific Counseling based on the on his outstanding research work. Dr. Hirsch is having experience of working as a formal faculty member of University of South Australia, Charles Sturt University, University of New England, Australia, University of Malaysia, Kanpur University, India, after as, an D, as a dean and professor of computer science, chair of research and faculty of AMA, introduce to sir, kindly take the session. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the night. Thank you.
and uh, just before starting my lecture uh, i would like to con congratulate the director of the research culture society and the the organizer in all and particularly the professor c n patel chair person research society professor natalia morton head of automation computer science and technology department we here in the university of brain and also thanks to the professor agdik for the excellent lecture recently and again also to everyone in the conference i would like to thanks and congratulate for organizing this excellent conference uh just uh, the thank you for giving me this opportunity for delivering my lecture and for that i feel very proud and what i feel today there is a combination of my last 42 years in five countries uh during last few years i i take an interest in how to manage the science and technology and involving knowledge particularly the reuse of the knowledge so i i think today i am taking this step to elaborate you a little bit about what have been and what can we further explore in this area surely all everybody knows the what is the definition of science because the particularly developing countries have been facing great dilemma however some country like china they may manage the knowledge technology to what extent you would like to discuss but everybody knows what is the science science everybody knows is nothing is the study of nature is the study of man and his environment and next question what is the technology because technology is nothing it is just a discipline process or dividing or converting resources to material object or process but of, of course they are clearly useful for the human needs technology they refers to the practical solutions which fashion in respect of their particular needs of the human solve the day to day problem and also the modification of the environment so we try like to discuss how we can optimize our resources and time particularly through the knowledge management so here the what kind of strategy of knowledge management can be taken at this stage because science and technology we know both are just available tools and why and how why that this knowledge is involved in not this is very interesting and how we transfer to each other now you know that science and technology to engineering of course it's itself is a great example of the knowledge management and to some extent optimization you can say but actually what need to be optimized so we optimize knowledge management so we optimize processes so we optimize system or so we optimize the technology management or engineering management etc these days like something like this there are so many points how to cope this management problems particularly we come to the knowledge management are nothing as we know it is the integration of the technologies and of course all the processes are there to support the knowledge management but question is that how to do that nowadays a great problem this is a great problem particularly in our big country in like india is a huge country managing the knowledge particularly scientific anything for age is a tremendous problem but particularly we take a simple model that there are four parts of how we can share the knowledge how we can distribute the knowledge capture and codify knowledge and of course create the knowledge in each of the quarter there are several activities in all so here the question again here that if if we share the knowledge what kind of advantage is there how we can optimize 
and it kept us have body size knowledge then what kind of activities are involved for example nowadays artificial intelligence system expert system neural system physiology genetic algorithm so many systems are there to capture and codify the knowledge but at the same time how to transmit into the useful form of the knowledge we can say the knowledge in the group industry particularly where there is lack of resources in developing countries and they are making good use to some extent but how it is useful how can they make we may they can make it useful Similarly, we can distribute knowledge through various processes because we have now technology, we have software, we have a hardware and software technology, and we can make, of course, we can create the knowledge that much of the entity investment and so on. So, of course, we need to manage the scientific theory. We need to manage the basic concept of science and technology. A most acceptable model of the organizational knowledge management, particularly that two extreme texts. leadership and culture without both and then it is very difficult to achieve but between them what are the same processes knowledge management processes we know in knowledge we share we apply we create we identify adapt and so many things are there but of course ultimately the point is that that how the business processes how the performance or the organization is measured and how it can affect within the knowledge management activity. course we know that these are some of the activities but at the same time the culture is also to be impressive particularly at the university level the what should be kind of the culture among the faculty should be there are they really interested in exchanging are they really interested in sharing the knowledge are they really they are doing shared knowledge sharing with the industry particular because if you cannot share this knowledge in the industry in the university then you cannot cope with the modern advancement you cannot cope with the developing the development of the basic instruments at the in at, at the industry level so the question is that how we can cope and how we can particularly cooperate with the industry now a very fundamental model of the knowledge management is given by non scientists in 1950 when davani scientists of course and it is a universal knowledge management model and knowledge management model is nothing there are two kinds of knowledge tacit that is verbal explicit and the documented knowledge there is always cycle the knowledge is converting from one form to the another through the four process, processes socialization when we talk face to face externalization we had a dialogue between and internalization within the organization learning by doing or some the other teaching processes or we combine new knowledge with the existing knowledge of the organization so these are the four processes through this process as for example a teacher go to class teach the student he converts the explicit knowledge to the tacit knowledge and the tacit knowledge to explicit knowledge because the student notes it and then again some student goes to some other place or sticks somewhere then and what again next to it to take knowledge but at the same time the student and teacher they cope in their own way how to create the explicit and the tacit knowledge now in the history that the biggest management of the knowledge you know the failure of the european satellite it was just after few seconds taking from there at this part it turned out it's on 4th june of 1996 There was a loss of three hundred seventy million US dollar. Only because at the second stage, the it was not free to cope with the problems. The problem was nothing. Only they have to reuse the code. Only they have to copy one code at one stage and copy to the another stage. This was the wrong. So it is a level of the knowledge management. The third stage costs to three hundred seventy million dollar. So based on that. we created as so many models on knowledge but this is a particular type of the model is recently we are teaching or we are recently taking into our research how a firm age and firm size are affected with three factors knowledge management knowledge usability and knowledge saving and particularly this three fact particularly the one point how these processes centralize the all processes within the organization without centralization we cannot use appropriately all our assets 
and formalize to formalize it and then this is particular kind of knowledge particular level it is formal so we have to use how it can affect the organization performance so many studies have been already done of course it is there is a conflict in so many ways of the three uh, assets like knowledge management knowledge usability and knowledge sharing now everybody knows that the, then we came into one very interesting point here the main core idea here which affecting the entire environment of the knowledge which is called knowledge reuse reuse you know that without any effort without any re considering further we can apply the knowledge so we can apply the knowledge you know of we can apply the reuse the software we can use the system we can use the processes and so many ways we can reuse and everybody knows that that there are many other already simple processes going into basic industries uh, that sometimes they reduce it they reuse it they recover and they recycle but here the question is that that is reusability particularly in the knowledge brand and in the university in the software engineering and so many right industries are being used today which have a great advantage to all these kinds of industry so we come we created a simple model here that that some if you have knowledge we divide into two parts aesthetic knowledge aesthetic knowledge now this knowledge we have many many processes for example we we have reuse the knowledge we index the knowledge we we have different kind of knowledge that we create aesthetic knowledge sometimes you adapt the knowledge and sometimes we adopt depends on only adapt because adapt this there are not all knowledge is useful so we need to adapt some part of the knowledge we use the right hand side the time time factor to get the direction with the time how it is changing uh, we have all our different kind of education technology we have different kind of the members and I, all these are using this technique that how ultimately we could get one cycle to the another cycle so what we see how it could be be cost effective how it is useful for the organization we have to see it in particular context of the knowledge transfer now here is yes we extended non ca model in three dimensions i soon want to add the non ca model is two dimensions that asset and explicit knowledge are changing but of course in non ca model there is a conversion of the knowledge from socialized from asset to explicit and reverse but here he has not considered the reusability of knowledge how to reuse knowledge while well, he was knowing that reusability is there okay reuse the knowledge how it is affecting the entire organization and the knowledge how it affects the knowledge management here what we see here that we take tested and explicit knowledge and then with two dimension and third dimension we take the reusability which is particular to both tested knowledge and explicit knowledge As a, as a result, what happened by all survey technique and by all kinds of the the knowledge management system, we found that 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 unlike not the model, we have a cone. The locus of the knowledge is a cone in the three dimension, rather than the spiral of the non. We have a knowledge in all the three dimension. Means that knowledge is touching so many factors all together, and this is called experimental. So reusability affects all the ways. either the socialization or the rationalization or the internalization or the communication everywhere we can use the concept of the knowledge reusability but the question is that the not only knowledge reuse the software is reusability which is very very being used highly used in many places and here would like to emphasize that we are not talking of simply that the you use the knowledge you use the knowledge we can use object we can use any artifact we can use anything but it is appropriate it is sometimes it is not appropriate we have to adapt it you know microsoft microsoft adopt all different kind of screen because the copy and paste very simple not not only for that they have everybody know this is the kind of the screen is a friend to everyone and sometimes we not to think thousands of code already involved there they are avoiding thousands of um, millions of code but only giving you impression that we have this kind of screen or interface in the, in the software environment 
So what is the question here is that, that the really, uh, can we increase the quality of the knowledge? Yes, we can enhance the quality of the knowledge. Because every time we are using it, every time we are using the same software, every time we are using the same architect, every object, we, can, we have more confidence. And we, we can save our time, we can save our efforts. Sometimes it is not appropriate, so you have to adapt it, not only adopt. All engineering, science, humanities, and commerce admission, many areas, they needed the, the concept of knowledge review. And particularly, some universities are working on the knowledge management or in all these areas, but they are not having the concept of the usability appropriately being used. We have now many software now used based on the usability of concept, and many companies they are creating. So now this there is another story here. Not only knowledge use, but we have to create a homogeneous plate. Unlike computer science area, so many platforms, so many vendors, so many software to resolve one problem, one dilemma. We customer is confused. What is the problem here? Because they have not gone through the sharing process. They have not gone through the exchange and using process. But they, they couldn't unless they have the concept of they really do like to do the, the, the use uh, concept it being practical use. So yeah, the, the point is that the reusability of artifact, reusability of software, and reusability of knowledge really without much less efforts, it can increase or it can avoid the huge amount of the efforts and the time. And particularly for the link of pick, it should be taken into consideration. So, and then a simple, so I presented my simple lecture based on my two last year experiences. Thank you for listening to me and presently quite. Thank you so much, sir, for your talks. Gave a really great yeah. boost to yeah. our yeah. efforts yeah. for yeah. this conference. Thank yeah. you. Uh, now I would like to introduce our next guest, Dr. Froilan D. Mobo, Associate Professor. Uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, he, uh, him. Uh, Dr. Froilan D. Mobo uh, is Associate Professor and uh, at present he is uh, Assistant Director of the Department of Research and Development in Philippine Merchant Marian Academy and PhD Coach in Cell Academic Malaysia. He is also a professor in the graduate school, Columban College, Olangapur City. He published a book in research abroad entitled Student Guide for Writing a Research Proposal and in an abstract book. He has awarded best in the research during the 2014 regional ICT research Kolankian, top five finalist in the research during the 2016 International Research Colonian and winner in the 2020 international competition, My Growth, My Start, Best International Researchers and the Best International Academic Male Division under Overseas. In 19, uh, sorry, in uh, 2019, he was awarded as an outstanding alumnus in Graduate School of Adenata City. University Pangasians. Uh, Likewise, he was elected as a vice president for Metro Subic Bay ICT Council. Welcome, you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is my honor uh, to be invited in this prestigious conference. So, uh, my topic is about emerging technologies in the 21st century. So, uh, the community adoption in the Internet of Things or IoT, IoT is, is picking up stream and entering mainstream production and initially improving existing processes and operations aligning with the Industry 4.0. So, industries are gearing up from pilot projects and proofs of concept and there are, general, ja, there are challenges that are still exist in the community Fragmented standards and security are hindering IoT from reaching its full potential. Emerging technologies in engineering right now, especially in the field of Internet of Things, IoT are really growing fast and nobody can stop it because of its evolution due to the convergence of numerous technologies, real-time analytics, machine learning, uh, commodity sensors, and embedded systems 
traditional field of embedded systems, wireless sensor networks, control systems, and automations, and other all contributed to enabling the Internet of Things. In most end user right now, the IoT technology is most synonymous with products pertaining to the concept of the smart technology, including devices and appliances such as lighting fixtures, thermostats, home security systems, and cameras and other home appliances can be controlled via devices associated with the ecosystems such as smartphones and smart speakers. With the aid of the Internet of Things, we might as well adapt it in a new normal after the post-COVID-19 pandemic, which we are uh, facing right now. So the IoT is not only about technological transformation, but also addresses the continuous and little change of the corporate backbone right now. So uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has triggered reflective changes across the nation and even in the global, accelerating the shift towards the education for pain zero and even in the internet of things. So the IoT scenario were focused in reasonable advantage. Number one, cost reduction. Second, productivity. Third, sustainability. And last is innovation. The goal was to make well run the business run better in the new normal after the post pandemic. So devices in the, at the start of the internet updates or the IoT, devices was brought with it with the corresponding shifting in the e-commerce space as consumer lifestyles keep changing and becoming more adaptive, especially in the current pandemic situation. Similarly, the increasing rate at which online shoppers have adopted the internet has seen e-commerce grow progressively and is expected to be the future of retail as most of the growth which is happening in the 21st century. So as you notice, we have the diagram using the IoT technology, all platforms, all the business will be run in a distributed platform. So among the challenges for the, or the, for the organization is how they continue to transform to their enterprise delivery, including the factory in the world, real world that has gone beyond the, the decentralization. So uh, as you seen in the diagram, most of the countries right now are spending their time using the internet uh, as part of their new normal and uh, part of their transactions. And understanding the technical requirements which are associated with the transactions, which may include e-commerce platforms or collaborative technologies to support virtual interactions, uh, technical requirements for this such as is by using the e-commerce, which is integrating with the IoT or other platforms, which will might be the use of the new platforms this coming uh, new normal after the post-pandemic. So business establishment closures may force many customers to adapt this platform in the e-commerce even for items like fresh vegetables or fruits which may many consumers prefer to shop in person but due to uh, quarantine protocols they will be shifting to a new platform which is the using the technology platform right now so even in our government in the philippines the department of agriculture will be launching their e-commerce in agriculture and fisheries which will be a new mechanism with new marketing or trading of agricultural uh, products which will be produced using the online platform. So online selling like Shopee, Amazon, and Lazada will be very trending this coming new normal because it will reflect how the small medium enterprise may start again from the COVID-19 pandemic. So as you notice, all the situations right now will be uh, done in an online transactions. Even in the the uh, online process of delivering food and uh, will be done in uh, online platform. So adaptive learning management system starting this school year as per the Commission on Higher Education and the Department of Education guidelines in a trifocal education since in the Philippines we have the basic education, the technical education skills and the Commission on Higher Education will be are using the online learning management system. So the, the online teaching and learning are going to be more regular and teachers must be prepared to learn more a creative and adaptive learning management system. What is new is the colleges and uh, universities will embrace it as part of their vital uh, processes to how the next generation of learner, learners are taught using the new platform. So using the learning management system, it will be uh, a good starting point for them.
So in a world where disasters and disruptions are increasingly becoming the, the norm, it is important for schools and other universities to train teachers how to use the said platform and to encourage them to devote their time to teaching on and at least as a drill mechanism to prepare for unexpected events. It is not just about the pandemic we're facing right now, no, it's, but it's about the how do we adopt the, the technology. So we will see more classes being conducted through uh, web video conferencing, such as what we are using right now, such as Zoom, Skype, Bible, Google Meet. Some schools and universities will use the learning management system uh, and other platforms just to, to enable students to complete assignments, deli deliver presentations, take assessments, and receive an intermediate an immediate response from their teachers online. So that would be a good starting point for, for them. So that would be the last part of my presentation. So I hope I have shared and discussed better well regarding the emerging technologies in the 21st century. Thank you and good morning again. Uh, thank you, sir. That was a, a very wonderful presentation on uh, online teaching and learning and uh, introducing us with the current trends and teaching uh, the stuff online with Google Meet and Zoom, etc. Uh, now I would like to introduce Dr. Pokuluri Kiran Sri. Uh, he has received his B.Tech and M.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering from JNTU and Anna University, respectively. He has obtained his PhD degree in the area of artificial intelligence from JNTU Hyderabad. He has authored six textbooks for UG and PG students for engineering and AI and published more than 80 research articles in various international journals and conferences. He has filed and published four patents in the area of deep learning. His bibliography was listed in Marcos Who's Who in World 2000, uh, 29th edition 2012 USA. Professor Kiran is a recipient of Bharat Excellent Award from Dr. G. V. Krishna Murthy, former election commissioner of India for two times and recipient of Rashtriya Ratan Award. He also worked as principal of the NBKR Institute of Science and Technology, second oldest private engineering college, Vidyanagar, for two years. He has got 18 plus years of teaching experience and working as a professor in the department of CSE at Sri Vishnu Engineering College for Women, Bhima Varan. His uh, global vice, he is the global vice president of WSA, which is World Statistical Data Analysis Research Association. I welcome you, sir. The floor is all yours. Uh, thank you very much, madam, for the nice introduction. And it's a privilege uh, to me for being part of international conference on science, engineering, and technological in innovation, which will be conducted today and tomorrow. And I have to thank uh, the director of Research Culture Society, Mr. C. M. Patil, sir, for giving this opportunity. Uh, I also thank uh, Kiviri National uh, University, Ukraine, for uh, enabling me to be part of this international conference as a keynote speaker. And as per uh, the suggestions of Mr. C. M. Patil, I have taken a, a title which is called as Cellular Automata and its applications in bioinformatics. Uh, as per the Gartner reports, uh, which was released in the last month, uh, uh, he has identified 10 promising technologies that can disrupt the world. The first technology that was uh, listed is artificial intelligence. And I have taken a technique in artificial intelligence. We call most of the people uh, just try to understand and try to, uh, uh, people are working on the cell automata now. Cellotomata is uh, a, a technique where most of the problems in bioinformatics uh, can be solved by using this cellotomata uh, technique. So I have taken this topic and uh, it, it, it is organized like this. Madam, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, the screen is visible, sir. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Go to the next slide. So I just basically wish to introduce what exactly the strength of cell automata, where exactly cell automata can be used, what will happen if cell automata is augmented with artificial intelligence and deep learning, 
then we try to just understand this uh, where exactly this cell automata i have applied and published some uh, sign index papers so cell automata is a technique where it, it can be called a set of cells and a grid actually so what what exactly uh, you have in cell automata is in, in general in finite automata you have a state and you wish to move from one state to other state cell automata is a set of cells and a grid where you can move from one state to other state with respect to some rules so this rules will be uh, crucial in classifying things and now cell automata when it was augmented with the deep learning the classifier accuracy will increase that what we will see what exactly uh, will happen if you introduce cell automata into bioinformatics what are the open problems in bioinformatics why do we need interdisciplinary research and what will happen if you are performing in interdisciplinary areas where you are going to apply a deep learning and computer science technique into some other area of colors uh, bioinformatics and what is the significance who who will use this research because who was uh, who were the end users of this research that we will discuss as i said uh when we consider a dna sequence as a terms of d's and g's and uh, agcts the input will be in the form of agcts when that input was taken when you wish to find out most important problems in bioinformatics like what is the disease causing gene whether it is inherited from your father or mother if you have six fingers in the hand what is the reason for that so if you have the history of diseases are like i have given set of symptoms and somebody ask me what can be the disease that is attributed this symptoms obviously you have a innate classifier we call it as mycin which can tell the possible disease so if you have the history of the diseases that you are getting for the last at least 3 years obviously your cell automata is a very good classifier which can predict what can happen in future also so uh, even we have many classifiers which are working with cell automata and deep learning to predict the type of cancers you are prone in future so if i wish to introduce cell automata cell automata set of cells and a grid and the most important part of cell automata when you combine with deep learning is this type of rules you need to create neighborhood something like if you are uh, you most of the people who are listening to this know about tesla Tesla is an automatic car which can, uh, which can, uh, without driver it can move. So when it is moving from one place to that place, it has to depend upon the left neighbor, right neighbor, as well as the front and back. So it has to consider four neighbors. So while coming to the research that we have in bioinformatics, every time when you take a DNA sequence or protein sequence, it will be having three neighbors. So uh, sometimes what is that we have to do is we have to consider three neighbors. Sometimes we need to consider four neighbors. it depends upon the application so when you consider general neighbor cellular automata when you wish to move from one state to other state it has to depend upon the left neighbor sometimes it has to depend upon the right neighbor it has to depend upon its own state also this is a general format where uh, when people who are aspiring to pursue research or pursue phd in the area of artificial intelligence most of the people are taking up uh, this project even last time when i, I was to iit madras almost six uh, phd scholars are working on cell automata and ind integration towards deep learning so it, it is the need of the hour and people are focusing their work on uh, uh, deep learning now cell automata and uh, deep learning if you augment both of them you are getting a very versatile and robust classifiers so uh, uh, it is about uh, uh, when the cell automata is invented how people has uh, used the cell automata in various aspects how many types of cell automata is there what are the strengths of a hybrid cell automata what is a nonlinear cell automata this is what the discussion that will happen based on the particular problem you can choose the particular cell automata and then you can augment this uh, uh, deep learning models whether it is rna or whether it is cnn or an rnn and lstm it depends upon how do you understand the problem and what type of domain do you have so the important thing in cell automata is the rule selection is very important and it also depends upon uh, it is a innate classifier so it can learn from unseen cases that's what the strength of cell automata so uh, uh, when you wish to work on cell cell automata the basic thing that you, you need to understand here is no cell uh, will have the overall view of the entire structure 
so obviously when two cells communicate obviously if i say it is a three neighborhood cellular automata this three and this three will have a six cellular automata structure where these cells will have its own structure but the overall structure this is the most important thing that we have in cellular automata no cell will have the global view what is happening no what how this parallelism can happen all this it's very difficult for uh, somebody uh, who is coming from outside to it which will give more security for this cell automata so uh, i said we are we have taken a potential problem or we have identified some problems in bioinformatics and then uh, we try to apply our computer techniques on that problems and when we are searching for a open problems uh, which uh, uh, needs more versatility and more accuracy we found uh, uh, problems like how do you identify the protein coding regions how do you identify the promoter regions and how do you identify uh, the structure of protein all these things are open problems even though there are many class ways that are, uh, are that are available still there is a room for improvement that's what we feel and we started working on how do you uh, analyze and how do you understand dna sequence and how do you identify the protein coding region then we try to apply this uh, our computer technique called as cellular automata and deep learning on various problems of bioinformatics uh, the entire theme of my presentation is we started uh, finding a classifier for each problem by the end of the day we have found a common platform where most of the applications of bioinformatics can be solved by using this platform that is the reason this platform was published by two scientific journals two different uh, platforms we has we have identified and we have developed so that most of the common problems in bioinformatics can be applied on this uh, two problems and in general if i uh, if somebody asks me what is the time that you uh, the time you have taken to identify whether a sequence is protein coding region or not it is 0.07 nanoseconds so we try to have a common platform <coughs> because the challenge of the research is more like uh cell itself is the minute part of your body in your cell you have a dna in the dna you have a gene sequence and protein coding region exists in this exons this exons will be the minor part of uh, the dna this is what the structure is so the complexity of the project is we need to identify some region which was located in exon and i say exon is the main minute part or minor part of your dna this interns will be the major part so the challenge is like when you take a dna sequence in the morning like uh, you could see the dna sequence will be like this or uh, the sequence neighbors will change at this moment i can say the neighbors of t are uh, g and g but some point of time after some time the neighbors will change if the properties will remain same so the challenge of the research uh, when we try to apply our research in bioinformatics is the dna sequence lengths will ch will change see if i take a kid of 3 years old the dna sequence length will be 54 uh, a grown adult will have 354 and uh, to 556 so you need to have a class fair which can handle different lengths of dna sequences apart from that this class fair has to predict something because it, it, every time the input uh, is dynamic and it has to predict the neighbors so uh, the problem is very complex in the terms of you are going to identify something which is a minute part of your body apart from that the dynamic change of your neighbors and the different lengths of input that we have identified are the potential pro uh, uh, potential things that somebody wish to apply this by from uh, apply computer technique on bioinformatics so then uh, the second problem that we have identified as open problem bioinformatics so how do you identify the promoter region so what will happen if you identify a promoter region is you can find uh, whether that person is prone to some cancer or not if he is prone to some cancer what type of cancers you can get so what is that we have done is we try to have a common class fair which can predict this protein coding regions as well as promoter regions with less time like pcr we have identified with 0.7 nanoseconds 
and PR we have identified with 0.8 nanoseconds. So together, uh, what is that? Term? Our intention is we need to have a common platform where most of the open problems in bioinformatics can be applied by can be addressed by computer techniques, and it has to be done faster. So what is our task of computer science department is to identify the promoter region. and the bioinformatics department they will analyze and they will tell you what type of cancers you can get what type of uh, uh, is it a breast cancer or is it a bone cancer or is it other type of cancer that you can get and this is what our uh, 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 subset or our domain is to take the input process the input and identify whether this protein coding region exists in this dna sequence or not so for that we have also done we have also done a very important uh, a literature survey where what type of classifiers are there and how our classifier can be versatile adaptable and robust so some of people i can say that i, I have a cla classifier accuracy of 98 but nobody can use sometimes it, it is not reliable and it is not dependable but that is the reason we have started our web server to benchmark so this web server is uh, uh, there for the last 3 years the web server if you give a dna sequence it try to predict promoter region protein coding region and it also predicts the structure of the protein these three very important problems in bioinformatics are identified and we have addressed this by using our ai technique that technique we call it as cell automata with deep learning so if you identify the structure of protein you can extract a lot of information like uh, how can a doctor can prescribe medicines without side effects how can one cell is going to control other cells and most of the inherent or or most of the innate structure of the body can be understood only by this uh, structure of protein whether it is a secondary structure or a quaternary structure so the important observation uh, i i kept this slide intentional is like when we try to go for interdisciplinary research we need to identify the logic among all the problems and we have successfully found a platform where all these problems can be uh, can be addressed by a single classifier this is what uh, a novel thing that we have done and now we are trying to identify more problems in bioinformatics like what is uh, how do you identify the structure of rna which will be helpful for uh, identifying many other diseases so uh, the intention of uh, having this discussion uh, domain here is how can we apply because ai is everywhere we are living with uh, in a ai world so obviously i wish to uh, 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 take a session on how can ai can be applied in bioinformatics my future research earlier research was how ai is used for weather prediction where uh, that was a sponsored project by dst for 30 lakhs we have done it and i have published three papers and one paper was in scientex journal so once i complete that um, weather prediction and the stock market prediction i was working uh, in this area so that the output of this research can be useful for the society purpose that is the reason we have given the output of this entire project to who so that uh, they will they can give their comments so that this can be used by so many people so for uh, developing this type of innate classifiers that we have done uh, we have uh, developed many other class where like artificial immune system multiple attractor cell automata the target is to identify pcr the second class where identify pr the third class where is integrated class where which can identify both of them we have identified identified different uh, class fairs and we have combined them with a common architecture so that most of the problems in bioinformatics uh, can be and then because uh, this bioinformatics problem has to be ratified by a human expert see if i say my system will uh, will supplement or suggest or uh, will help the doctors to prescribe some medicines without any side effects uh, that has to be approved not only by the system by the human expert the doctors has to approve that this is giving a good uh, advice and will take that so uh, all these are very important uh, uh, the entire strength that uh, I, i wish to give within 15 minutes as per our director sim patel sir told me is uh, it is the way in which we need to 
uh, go for interdisciplinary research because this conference mainly focuses on science engineering and technological inventions the last part i'm just focusing on how do you uh, go for a technological invention for many social applications this is what my presentation is thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, thank you sir thank you for uh, such a wonderful and informative presentation and uh, we understand the significance of such a renowned work on rna dna bioinformatics and cellular automata at present thank you sir thank you now before i introduce our next speaker uh, it would be a great honor for me to launch a book published by a research culture society in publication on data cleaning the statistical and numerical inference by dr sanjay gore and dr darsh tabendi pandya published by research culture society in publication as we can see the cover page on the screen um, dr sanjay gore is currently working as professor and head of department of computer science and engineering of jaipur engineering college and research center jaipur he did his phd in data mining and data analytics he has published more than 95 research papers with scopus index and ugc recognized journals also published eight books on computer science and informa information management he successfully guided six scholars of phd and five are still working under him he organized number of conferences workshops as a uh, core organizer in special sessions in other countries like uk usa and malaysia dr sanjay gore is associated with research culture society as the editorial member and expert trainer uh now i would like to introduce our uh, last speaker dr natalia mokun a uh, doctor of sciences engineering professor and head of automation computer science and technology department krivayri national university ukraine laure of president of ukraine prize for young scientist member of council of expert of uh, the ministry of education and science for projects and scientific work member of sectoral expert council 15 automation and instrumentation of the national agency for higher education quality assurance naqa ukraine has over 150 scientific publications including 49 scopus and 19 ws pro publications taken an active part in scientific and organizational activity basic focus area of her activity includes theoretical substan substantiation of method and systems of adaptive control over technological process of mineral concentration on the basis of ultrasonic magnetic and radio magnetic measurement of or material characteristics methods of processing and application of incomplete and fuzzy information to forming control actions in automated control systems development of up to date adaptive systems of optimal control over industrial process and mining on the basis of smart technologies i uh, would like to uh, call upon dr natalia morgan for the presentation hello hello my colleague can i demonstrate my can i demonstrate my screen yeah, yeah sure sure go on please Every iron ore enrichment works of met invest are a large contribution to the ukrainian balance of payments another giant of the city are yavras mining company and heldenberg cement one minute one one of the largest educational institution of ukraine for qualified personal training in pedagogical economical ecological and metallurgical mining engineering technological specialization uh, for the central region of ukraine and uh, first of all for the dnipropetrovsk region uh, the university comprised and faculties and uh, two research institution uh, six colleges uh, student life at our university is multifaceted is and even full The university ensures a well-balanced student experience by offering a variety of extracurricular and curricular activities uh, that provide leadership and power professional development opportunities. Active participation in social, cultural, and sports events is key to laying the foundation for student personality development and promotion healthy way of life, encouraging the spirit of self-reliance and initiative. Uh, the university scientists take part in the various Ukrainian and foreign scientific 
event, includes conferences, symposium, and scientific research exhibition. Uh, the most uh, widespread student research forms include individual work at university department and faculties, participation in scientific uh, circles, problem solving groups, round table and seminars. Students are engaged in writing scientific papers, participating in national and international academic competition. Uh, student uh, research uh, research uh, works uh, are is an individual and uh, group. The student uh, scientific community of our university uh, unites members of uh, specialized scientific uh, circles and the departments and students working in their individual research. It is uh, targeted at realizing a creative potential of young talented people through involving them in conducting research in the field of specialization. A great attention is paid to introduction of research basic into the training processes as students are forced to upgrade their knowledge and skill. Our university uh, has considerable experience in conducting research for local enterprises, incorporate to research institute and collaborates with local research institutions. Academy of Mining Science are a function of the basis of the university. Scientific subjects performed um, by our department scientists, mainly for enterprises of mining and metallurgical complex, are connected with uh, solving the task of increasing enterprises profitability due to introducing modern automation control system, preparing technical suggestion for updating technological processes and production automation systems, development algorithmic and software support of automation control system optimizing modes of technological processes, designing means of human interface, scan the system, applying web technologies and automation. We have experience of introducing optimization project based on controllers made by Schneider, Electric, Siemens, Phoenix, Contact. Uh, improving methods and technical means of diagnostic of mining and concentration equipment condition. Applying intellectual technologies of big data analysis. Development of measuring devices and automation using microcontroller. We have experience of designing devices for the, for the industrial internet of things. Uh, since uh, 2004, the university has been one of the best university in Ukraine in terms of economic and structural scientific exams. Uh, the university scholars, engineers, and technicians of Kriverik Enterprises, scientific works of research and designing institutes, work together in a joint intellectual effort to solve essential problems of innovation development of the national industry. Their scientific achievements are well appreciated both in Ukraine and abroad. The university is proud of our alumni. About 90,000 students, including 1,000 students from 70 countries all over the world, have been trained in our university. All of them successfully employed in different industries in our country and overseas. Uh, the university keeps an eye on the issue of the future job placement of graduates. And the mission of our university is to contribute to the development of the society by means of competitive specialist training, as well as increasing a new generation of healthy and creative patriotic youth. Moreover, the university students are also encouraged to participate in uh, sports, recreation, and cultural activities. Constant development of uh, our university makes sustainable growth of our promotion prospects. So, we are open to our cooperation and welcome to our university. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Dr. Natalia Mokun, for such a captivating speech and for your